Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Małgorzata Bonikowska, the Center for International Relations. Welcome to our uh, weekly talk. Today, the topic is really special because we have a special occasion. Um, today, we celebrate together with our German colleagues the 50 years of Lufthansa operations in Poland. And we also want to, to discuss this 50 years of Polish German relations. So Zoom the world with us in the series we do together with the Konrad Adenauer Foundation uh, in Poland. And let me welcome our guests. Uh, let me start with uh, Frank Wagner, who is a general manager of the Lufthansa Group in Poland. Hi, Frank. Hello, Margarita. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us and congratulations for this anniversary. Thank you. Um, and of course, if we have Lufthansa as uh, being uh, uh, in Poland and representing Poland, uh, we cannot uh, um, not invite our airlines, so a lot airlines. So let me welcome Michał Fio, uh, Chief Commercial Officer of LOT Airlines. Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. Hello to everybody. Thank you very much for the invitation. And we are very happy, uh, as the Center for International Relations is concerned, that uh, ourselves, it has been 25 years the Center has been operating as an independent think tank, very much covering Polish-German relations. And that's why we have with us our founder and president of the board, uh, Ambassador Janusz Reiter. Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. Uh, gentlemen, uh, we... Uh, let me start with, by saying that uh, definitely everybody who follows German-Polish relations can see that there is uh, a lot of things happening between Pol Poles and Germans. Uh, the dynamic uh, in all the spheres is quite high, but we've done a lot of things together in the last 50 years and especially in the last 30 years. So uh, let's hear, first of all, the comment of uh, our colleague from the think tank world, Dr. Agnieszka Wada. She used to work in the uh, Polish uh, Public Affairs Institute for many years, and now she's working in Polish-German Institute um, in Germany. It has been a long while she covers uh, both Ger Germans and Poles with a special barometer, the research on these two nations. And uh, we t took out of the, the, new, uh, the new research done in 2020, just uh, the, when the pandemic started. So the recent uh, barometer was showing uh, what is the status of this relationship now. And that's what we've discovered, uh, that 72% of Polish people judge these relations to be good and 55% of Germans judge these relations to be good. So 2020, that was the result. And let us hear first Agnieszka, how she is explaining this research. Most of the Poles and the Germans who answered the, the relations are good, uh, think so because uh, the economy is so important. So they, they gave this economic uh, argumentation that because the Poles and the Germans have common economic interests and here this uh, Polish perception is much stronger. So for the Poles, that's an obvious fact. Uh, we have common economic interests uh, and the relations must be good because we really rely on each other. We really need each other. And the second reason given by the Poles, it was really interesting because uh, the reason given was that the, the Polish government that uh, makes the relations as, as uh, so good. And there were the the voters of the government party. So we ask also which party you would vote for if the, the elections would, would be next Sunday. And, and we, we see that the, the, the peace voters are clear, the, 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 share the opinion that the re relations are good because the Polish government um, makes them so good. Uh, and the other side, the opposition side of the Polish respondents uh, answered, well, that there is the German government that really takes care of the relations. Uh, but the, the main reason is that for the Poles, the relations are very um, economic uh, based. And that's, that's uh, the main argument. And the last point, um, always uh, the Germans asked about actually in, 
by each question, the number of Germans who, who have no opinion is quite high or higher than the Polish one. So there is the difference that the Poles have an answer on this question. And a quite big number of Germans say, mm, I'm not sure why it is so, or are the relations good or bad? And that's why the difference is so uh, big. Uh, so thank you very much for this comment. Agnieszka Wada was uh, speaking. And uh, the first question will go to Ambassador Janusz Reiter, who actually, you were uh, our ambassador, Polish ambassador to Germany, and you are one of the, 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 the persons who are very much involved in the dialogue between Poles and Germans. How can you comment on this and how would you describe Polish-German relations? Well, first, I don't think that it is all about economy. I think this is uh, um, more also or even more about uh, kind of cultural and mental nearness. These two nations are very near to each other. They are not always aware of that, but they are. And now for the first time, we have a, a situation where, well, there are less, but now again more, but in general less historical and political obstacles. So people can finally discover the, the, the neighbor who for political reasons was uh, not seen as a partner, but more as an enemy. This is a very close relationship, but uh, Close and nearness makes it also complicated because uh, we have a, a certain gap. Um, Poland is certainly not as important for Germany as Germany for Poland. For Poland, Germany is the defining uh, partner, it's a defining relationship. This makes it not always easy because we have. Uh, kind of German centrism in Poland. Everything is about Germany. So people focus so much on Germany. Some love Germany, some hate Germany, but everybody has strong feelings about Germany. This is not so much the case on the German side. The Germans are more relaxed. However, there is also something that many Germans are not even aware of. Uh, that's the uh, tradition of patronizing of patronizing in, in the attitude toward Poland. And I think um, uh, learning that is an important condition, precondition for uh, developing a good relationship. The Germans have to understand that there is the, the, the tradition of patronizing. On the Polish side, it is not patronizing. On the Polish side, it is lack of confidence which is actually lack of self-confidence. Uh, uh, I uh, remember a conversation I had, a discussion I had with a group of uh, well-educated Poles living in Germany many years ago when I was ambassador to Germany. And these people were really very supportive of the good Polish-German relationship. But then a lady said to me, well, Okay, I, I follow you, I follow you, I know why you are supporting a good relationship, but don't you think that this is a relationship like between David and Goliath? Hmm. I said, I don't really uh, believe that, uh, I don't have the feeling when I'm in Germany that all the people I meet here are Goliath, and I'm, I'm a, uh, a little David. And then I said, but did you read the story in the Bible to, uh, to the end? She said, oh no, I didn't. Really, yeah, that's right. But, um, uh, coming away from this tradition of looking at Germany as a Goliath and seeing ourselves as a David, but uh, this is important for creating a good, relaxed uh, relationship. And we need this good relationship for obvious reasons, for political and for economic reasons. Before we move to that, I just want to give the floor now to Frank, because you are actually the only German in our group here. And um, that's good to mention that, um, uh, you know, with the neighbors, all the neighbors who live in the houses, in the flats, in the buildings know that it's always better to have a 
good neighbor than to have a bad neighbor. So Frank, what would be your comment on what Agnieszka was saying, was telling us about this Polish-German relations and the judgment the Germans have about it? How do you look at Poles? Well, first of all, thank you, um, Margaret Schatter, for including me in this panel and using our 50th anniversary as, a, as an occasion, especially with such an illustrious panel. Um, and uh, I'm glad you point out um, I'm, I'm the only German in the panel, but I, I give you a little disclaimer. I personally, I haven't lived in, in Germany for a long time. I, my, my personal residence is actually in the UK. So I look at Germany a bit also like an outsider and I look at Poland and Germany in the same way. Uh, and I, so I claim so what to be, would be your impression more neutral. On um, mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, it's, it's, it's very telling. Um, and I, I, I follow the studies of uh, Dr. Vada with great interest. And I also, um, what, what Ambassador Reiter said really resonates that it's not only economic conditions that uh, determines the relationship. Our, our nations are so intertwined when it comes to not only the geographic proximity, but also the the, the personal relationships to relatives, every, you know, every German has a Polish relative, every Pole has, has a German relative. We intermingle, we intermarry. Um, so I think um, I see the, the fact that, what, what I would say is the fact that more Germans in, in the study of uh, Dr. Wada are more skeptical and Poles are more positive towards the relationship, maybe stems from the fact that exactly as uh, Ambassador Reiter said, the Poles have a much more, a much bigger awareness of Germany and what's happening in Germany and with Germany. Whereas the Germans, I think you would have to divide between the ones who know Poland firsthand, like I've experienced Poland now for, for the last five and a half years. And those Germans who only know Poland from either hearsay or from the media, I think they might have a completely different picture. I just give you an example. For me, it was an eye opener to move to Warsaw which I hadn't visited before, only for one day. And I was surprised by the modernity of the city. And the same, the same goes for p visitors who come to Poland for the first time, uh, or especially older generations. But I think, especially with the younger generations, I think there's a much closer proximity and also in, in terms of cultural closeness. And that it, this also translates into the, the, the economic sphere in terms of work and economy. Um, we are much, much closer, also an ethos, work ethos, than some people would think. Um, I, I always say my colleagues in Poland, and we have, we have in Poland now almost 3,000 employees as a Lufthansa group. Sometimes I tease my team and say, you're much more German than I am um, in the way you approach work and you go about work and in your professionalism and all that. So I think we're much, much closer than some Germans would accept because they don't know any better, because they don't have first-hand experience. Right, but as Ambassador Reiter said, you know, the neighbors, sometimes, you know, this closeness brings us closer, but sometimes this closeness is also a challenge, a problem. Like in uh, every good switch... family. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the, the key point now, you know, how we can build the future based on both the past, but also the certain approaches to each other we just uh, have now and this perception which has changed. Uh, uh, Michael, I would like to ask you because um, there was this comment on David and Goliath perception. Uh, so earlier we may have thought that this would be uh, the same uh, as far as Lot and Lufthansa, but Lot the recent years really uh, uh, the growth of our land lines was really um, really incredible and we were all poles we were very proud of that how would you comment on two things one is this economic base of our relations that the polish people really look at germans first of all with association of economy trade business work whatever you know in large sense it means and second is what would be the the relationship between Lot and Lufthansa right now? Um, thank you for this question. I will um, uh, thank you for formulating this in such a way that we'll focus now more on, on economics than on, than on politics, because I'm not a politician. I'm a humble ticket seller. And uh, these are rather numbers which um, 
which give really the better inform a better information about the reality. But firstly, let me congratulate Frank on the on the anniversary of uh, of Lufthansa here in Poland. Um, all the best for the next 50 years, Frank. Um, let me also congratulate you, Małgorzata, on the 25 years anniversary for of Center for International Relations. I would like also to mention that um, in this context, in the context of uh, German-Polish uh, relationship, there is also another university to be mentioned, a, a, a local one, absolutely appropriate for that time. This is 75 years of a first route uh, uh, of lot from Warsaw to Berlin. The first flight was commenced on the 11th of May, 1946 so we are just uh, in front of in front of the day so you have here all the all the possible universities 25 of you 50 of frank <laughs> and 75 of um, uh, of lot polish airlines so that's the time for for celebration um, uh, thank you for asking about uh, about economy because um, uh, indeed um, we can discuss a lot about what people what people think about each other, what is the state of um, uh, political uh, relations, which uh, government uh, is to be blamed for the uh, for this current situation. However, in the end, this is these are numbers um, which present the proper situation, and uh, this is always the international trade and the trade between Poland and Germany. Which, um, uh, which is blooming and which shows the real the reality in the relationship between the well, countries. Let's just, let's just and, uh, mention, let's remind the, the viewers that uh, uh, Germany is the Polish leader, leading partner. It's almost 30% uh, of our trade, which goes to Germany, but also the cooperation between the businesses, between Polish and German business is very, very, um, uh, very deep. That's correct, and also in recent year, in 20, for 2020, uh, Poland um, got a bigger partner of uh, of Germany. Uh, we uh, Poland is now on the position number five uh, with uh, 123 billion uh, euro um, um, imports, and uh, and uh, um, um, we are now bigger than than Italy. So we are absolutely the the trade partner of of Germany. What uh, uh, for sure needs to be, uh, and, and uh, coming back to the relation between uh, between Lot and uh, Lufthansa and this uh, uh, comparison of uh, Ambassador Reiter um, about the Goliath and David. Uh, indeed, uh, we are a smaller partner of uh, of Lufthansa, but we are so-called fully integrated um, airline within Mice and More and Star Alliance. This is why um, this is why we are able to grow our presence on the German market, um, uh, and uh, indeed, uh, five years ago, as you said, Malgorzata, we are we were relatively small. Uh, a lot operated only to Frankfurt and Munich, and um, uh, end of um, 19, beginning of 2020, this were already eight cities in Germany. Uh, which had uh, the direct uh, uh, route from uh, from or to uh, or to Warsaw, uh, Germany, and generally the region, the German-speaking region, Germany, Switzerland, and Austria is the second biggest market uh, from for lot Polish airlines after Poland, uh, just above two million seats, which uh, were offered uh, in um, uh, 2019 on the uh, on the market. It only shows the importance also from uh, from our perspective. Um, in terms, so maybe of instead of telling uh, about David and Goliath, maybe now it's a little bit like uh, between the brothers, younger and uh, older brother, and the younger brother is becoming more and more uh, influential. But there is a competitiveness, uh, definitely. So maybe Frank, also you can comment, jump in, and comment on this. How this, you know, dynamics between these two airlines um, uh, is now, especially you now during the time where it's very difficult time for airlines, generally speaking, uh, not only Lufthansa or Lot. Of course, yes, we're talking in the what has been the most disruptive crisis for aviation since you know since, at least since the second world war 
But I, I completely echo Mika's word. And I, I would even say, if you go by, uh, by the hi company history, we're actually the younger brother because the Lufthansa that I represent was only uh, refounded in 1954. Um, so long after, uh, you know, um, it, even after Lot's first flight to Berlin. And of course, there was another German airline which competed with Lufthansa, even in terms of names, which was the East German Lufthansa, which, um, you know, later turned into Interflug, who also operated before us. So, of course, our 50th anniversary is a young is a very young anniversary. But what Mikhail is saying is ex exactly true. Our, our business and the airline business is, a, is a, a direct reflection, a correlation of how industry has developed over, over the years. And in, in our case, from the very beginning, there was always an aspect of cooperation because when we started flying to Poland, um, air travel was still heavily regulated bilaterally. And there was a, there was a pool between the Polish and the German government that managed the capacities both for passengers, for cargo, and for postal services. Um, but of course, then when we started code sharing, the first code share was actually with Lot on the route to Berlin. But then in 2002, we had a bilateral code sharing in our industry means for, for the layperson, we market the same flight. So one airline flies, but both airlines sell the tickets for the flight. Uh, that's probably, arguably in commercial terms, the most, the deepest uh, cooperation that, that we have. Um, and that has always been a part of our joint history. And uh, I would not talk about David and Goliath. I, I would talk about two complementary partners, especially if, if you go back to uh, Mikhail's example, where we are very complementary. Lot operates from their Warsaw hub into the German region. And this is exactly what we do from our hubs, mainly Frankfurt and Munich, flying also to the Polish region, which we did bef before the pandemic, exactly the same number of cities we operated to eight. Um, so even our network and our timetables are in, in many ways very complementary. And then Mikhail also referred to our partnership within, within the Star Alliance, where we're two fully integrated partners, which also gives both our customers, our joint customers, access to benefits of, of other airlines. A group of 26 star lines is often compared to, uh, to the EU in many ways, also in the way how, it, uh, how it's operated. But um, then we also have this, uh, for, from a consumer point of view, very powerful vehicle, which is miles and more, where Lot is the landlord in Poland. Poland is one of the most important markets for miles and more where our customers can um, uh, enjoy joint benefits and, and, um, and entitlements for both, both of our airlines and benefit from both of them. Uh, I must say that Polish customers like to fly a lot because it's our airline, very old one, and we are still, you know, very proud that we didn't lose it in a way, that we still, you know, kept it, which is not necessarily the case uh, as far as the other countries uh, in Europe, uh, not only in our region. Uh, but before I get back to Michael, I want to ask Janusz, if you can just give us a little bit uh, wider description about this economic cooperation uh, between Poland and Germany, because we, uh, of course, we know that uh, our economy is really integrated with uh, the European economy, generally speaking, 80% of the Polish trade goes to the EU market. And of course, being both Poland and Germany, the EU member states, this uh, creates a situation where we are really kind of connected. Um, what would be your description of this relationship in a wider sense? What are the positive and maybe some negative aspects, if you find any? And what would be your prediction for the you know years to come after pandemic, where we all have the common Euro European uh, plan, recovery plan, and the European fund for you know anti-COVID measures? Well, thank you, Małgorzata. I promise I will do my best to try to find any negative uh, aspects of the uh, economic cooperation between Poland and Germany. So far, I have not succeeded to find any negative aspects. I have found a lot of positive aspects. And I want to make it very, very, very simple. I would say, well, Germany uh, clearly has contributed, largely contributed, to the economic recovery of Poland after 1989. And this is, I think, 
recognized by many people. But at the same time, Poland made also a large contribution to the economic success of Germany in the past well, 30 years. So uh, if Germany is today a robust, strong economy, one of the leading economies of the world, well, uh, I think without these close ties with Poland, this would not be, this wouldn't have been that easy. So actually, uh, this is uh, a very good relationship that both parties benefit from. We need each other. We need each other. And now, what well, the question is, how will the ongoing or just starting transformation of the economies in Europe, including the German economy? And the German economy has a, a, is facing, well, a deep transformation. Because after all, as, as uh, strong as this economy is, in the COVID crisis, also the weaknesses of this economy have been unveiled. And I think Germany has to do a lot of work as much as we do on the Polish side. And now the question is, oh, can we somehow uh, well, integrate these efforts to uh, transform our economies, to make them more resilient? And here, for example, I'm thinking about uh, the supply chains. How can we think again about the supply chains to make them more resilient after the COVID experience, but also how can we make our economies and, well, if you like, the, the European economy as a whole more competitive in times of a growing pressure of especially Chinese economy. I am strongly convinced that, that this strategic question of European competitiveness uh, cannot be addressed without close cooperation between these two countries. And the economic competitiveness also is a question of well, how well, would Europe will survive as an entity, as an unprecedented entity. There is nothing like the EU in other parts of the world. And if we care about the European Union, and I think we do care, then we need a cooperation with them who care too. And Germany certainly cares about the EU, not only for, well, idealistic reasons, also for uh, economic and political reasons, both for Germany and for the EU, for, and for, for Poland. The EU is the friendliest political and economic environment. If we lose that, well, we lose actually the base of our relationship. A lot is at stake. So this is why I believe that we need a strong relationship between the, these two countries. And I would like, last uh, uh, remark, I would like, I, I hope very much that what I said about David and Goliath is not uh, understood as my thinking. I just the contrary. I'm I'm saying well, stop. I'm, I'm saying to our Polish, uh, to to my uh, uh, fellow Poles, stop thinking about this relationship as a relationship between a David and Goliath. S uh, start thinking about it as a relationship between two uh, countries who are self-confident and who share, as I believe, a lot of interest, but also share, I believe, a common destiny. But I also remember what you said that, you know, you reminded this girl uh, what uh, was the end of this story of David and Goliath. And let me come back to Michael and this, uh, you know, competitiveness in the industry. Um, my question would be larger than Polish-German relations. I just want to, uh, you to ask, uh, ask you about uh, what is your perspective for LOT also and what would be the LOT strategy in the uh, recent, you know, years um, taking into consideration that the, the industry is badly hit, having Lufthansa uh, next doors, let's say. Yeah, so first of all, I would like to say that uh, indeed um, in aviation collaboration is extremely uh, important. Uh, I would say that there are two sides of the same coin. On one side, this is collaboration and on the other side, this is competitiveness. Why so? Because at the end we compete 
about the same passenger. The passenger from Krakow will either go to uh, US through Warsaw, which I very much prefer, or will buy the Franks ticket uh, over, over Frankfurt or, or, or Munich. There is a limited number of passengers and the capacity offered by the, uh, by the airlines, which uh, compete against, uh, against each other. So indeed, once again, I can only, I can only uh, support what Frank uh, said about the collaboration, um, the common sales, uh, I mean the uh, code sharing, uh, mice and more, and STAR, and also a lot of systems of IT systems, which are there at, at lot uh, for revenue accounting or for operations, um, uh, which come from uh, Lufthansa systems. Um, on the uh, other side, however, there is uh, there are the things that there are the dimensions, phenomena uh, regarding uh, the uh, competition, and um, this is not uh, the mindset, um, uh, Your Excellency Ambassador. It's rather about the statement of uh, of the of the fact that uh, that the companies here are slightly smaller than than the others, and the aviation. The economy of scale is extremely, extremely important. We will collaborate with our partners, with all the partners, uh, because uh, that's uh, the uh, there are the benefits of the customers, uh, which are the most uh, most important. I mean the security that the passenger will travel safely from one point to another. And if something happens, that uh, then uh, both uh, airlines support each other. That's uh, common in uh, in aviation. However, it's uh, not only co it is not about competition about the passenger. I have um, um, and this the the roots of this competition, uh, partly unequal competition, are in the in the past. Lot had a difficult um, uh, history history uh, behind it. Um, between 05 and 2015, we used to have rather 4 million passengers and not, uh, and um, the growth was, uh, was limited, although the market was, uh, was growing. This, are only, this is only the history of the last uh, five years when, uh, when lot is growing immensely. However, there are, of course, some barriers for, for development. For example, there, there, there is not only the um, collaboration in, for, in form of um, uh, a code sharing between the airlines, but there is also a deeper form of collaboration, which is uh, with, which are joint ventures, and this is something this is something which is created by Lufthansa and United Airlines on transatlantic uh, traffic. There are um, various others joint venture of Lufthansa with Singapore Airlines with uh, Japanese carriers and uh, or with Chinese carriers. And um, it uh, makes the product of Lufthansa um, somehow um, um, more uh, somehow richer than the one of, uh, of LOT. Um, if LOT wants to collaborate with the Singapore Airlines and have a better connection in Singapore, then um, LOT will hear Oh, but we have already our JV uh, with Lufthansa, and this JV is something which blocks us because we need to take care of our common business with Lufthansa. So, um, so um, of course we are not. Um, this is the self-confidence. It's not something which we are lacking, but uh, but we need to face uh, such uh, phenomena. And additionally, take us another example. Um, um, as you remember, beginning end of 2019, beginning of 2020, LOT was, was very close, or precisely said Polish Aviation Group, was very close to, uh, to buy uh, Condor, um, 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 holiday airline in, in German. As long as Condor was German, or frankly speaking, it was, it was British, there was a, there was an agreement, uh, a feeding service agreement between the airlines, which means that which meant that uh, Lufthansa delivered passengers from all the German cities to Munich and Frankfurt, which were the departure airports uh, for for Condor. 
when Polish Aviation Group announced that um, that it's going to buy the the airline, then Lufthansa immediately informed the uh, public that the contract will be terminated. Um, I think we are here in such a in such an environment when we can uh, talk openly about various issues because that the that's a think tank, that's uh, that's acad uh, academic uh, discussion, and I would say that only uh, that only being frank and open um, can uh, push us push us forward. But but this 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 happening, this is something which uh, made uh, I mean the this termination uh, made uh, you know the relationship somehow more difficult. Um, we but speak I find about what you, partnership. I find we, we are speaking about partnership. We are speaking about partnership. Uh, but um, what is really the real uh, partnership? Is it? Is it? Should it? Should be? Should it be only good for for one partner, or should it be good for for two for for both uh, sides? I'm rather in favor of the other of the of the second option. I think uh, that's a very good question to put because I think the first 30 years after 89, Poland was building its capacity and, of course, comparing itself to Germany as a closest neighbor. But we were also comparing ourselves to Belarus and Ukraine. So we were rather, you know, happy to follow the Western way. Uh, now, the other 30 years, the years to come, definitely Poland will be the country who will want to play uh, uh, in a larger sense, you know, uh, larger game and want to be really um, equal to the European partners uh, once we enter the European Union and also we are part of the West. But before I give the floor to Frank, I want to shift uh, to the larger um, topic of people because, you know, all the airlines will not exist, would not exist without people, of course, and passengers. And let me just quote uh, only some statistics that there are two million Poles or people of Polish origin living in Germany. So it's quite a, an important minority. We have uh, almost uh, 5 million Germans coming every year to Poland for tourism. At least this was the number before pandemic started. 5 million. It was really a substantial number for our tourism. And in Poland, we have still almost 2 million people learning German. So we are really in the top uh, countries among the top countries using this language still and, and learning. And I would like also um, to all of you to to look at the again, the research uh, Dr. Agnieszka Wada was doing this barometer, Polish German barometer, uh, where um, they were um, they were checking how uh, the Poles see the Germans and how the Germans see the Poles when we take different social roles and professional roles. What would they say if what the poll would say if the German is our neighbor, our boss in company, our uh, partner in business, and vice versa? Uh, let's hear uh, Dr. Wada's uh, comment on that. Uh, what I would like to uh, share with you are the uh, are the results of this study from the last twenty years. Just it is a very interesting tendency that shows where we are now and what has changed. I know the picture that you see is not really clear, but just see the tendencies, not the uh, exact numbers. Please just uh, have a look where we have, uh, where we started in the year 2000. The first poll was conducted in the year 2000. In all the given roles, the act acceptance of Germans in the Polish society was not especially high. Uh, it was uh, around 30, 30 percent uh, concerning uh, all these roles and where we are now. So look just at the last numbers. They are all about 80 percent or, or nearly 80 percent. So a, a huge difference. Um, and of course, it has it has reasons. And uh, when we when we want to explain the reason, what has happened that the polls didn't really accept uh, Germans as their bosses or, or the friends 20 years ago. Um, we need to concentrate on the past. Of course, the history did play a role. It still does play a role, but what has changed are the mutual contacts. And here, 
exactly the economic ties, the political ties, all the YAF exchange programs, Erasmus programs, scientific uh, exchange programs, they are all very important and influence the perception because the contact is the main point here, that we know each other, that we have many, many, many reasons to get in touch, to discuss, to explain each other everything. And then we have, we can trust each other. And that's why the perception has developed so positively. So it's not just that the country has changed, but the possibilities to be together, to work together has cha have changed and that influence that we not just like each other, but also are really willing to cooperate, are really open uh, to each other. And here, of course, we can ask what can be do more, uh, but the, the, the figures already show uh, that uh, that uh, it has changed. And just to, to show the German side, of course, as you see, from, from the German perspective, it has, it has also changed, but not as much as on the Polish side. And here you also see the difference between the Polish and the German opinions. Because the German level, let's say, in the year 2000 was higher. Because of course the Germans have had in the 90s and before uh, other attitudes to the Poles because the Germans were the nation that attacked the Poles and not another way around. So that's why the, the, why the Poles didn't trust the, the Germans so much that they were afraid of the Germans. For the Germans, having a Polish neighbor was nothing special or having a Polish friend. Uh, it was another emotion, let's say. Uh, and, and that's why the, the change is not as big as on the Polish side, but still, we can notice this change. And here, once more, the contact does play a role. So the Germans know the Poles now much better than 20, 30, 50 years ago. And that's why they are more willing to do something, to cooperate, to develop something. And I think that's, that's crucial for the, uh, for, for the development that we have observed during the last years. This was the result of the research. Uh, it has been uh, uh, done uh, through the recent 20 years to compare every year. And now we reach 2020. We don't have yet the results from this year and we have pandemic. So let me ask Frank now, um, commenting on what you already said, that your perceptions may be neutral. But I will, would like also you to comment uh, Agnieszka's uh, research and maybe a comment on this uh, expression, Polnische Wirtschaft, that it was always used in German as a maybe symbol of not the best, you know, way of organizing um, your economy, or generally as a kind of a critical statement concerning what is the status of the things. Has this changed? How this, you know, in your opinion, being in the business and dealing with the Poles every day, how do you judge about the Polish, uh, uh, not only economy, but potential for the next 30 years. Uh, thank you, Magosata. D different, difficult question, but very interesting. First of all, I think we're well past the, uh, the concept of Poland just being a, a cheap labor market. Um, I think that is completely beyond us. Nowadays, businesses, don't come to Poland because they're looking for um, low labor costs. They're looking for high professional, professionalized workforce for, for a, a good investment climate and for um, a highly qualified workforce. And that's exactly what our experience has been um, since, since we started uh, opening our own Polish companies. Um, just to, to take you back, not to 71, but to 1998, um, because um, uh, Mikal mentioned uh, uh, Lufthansa IT, um, we decided already in 1998 to set up our dedicated IT systems uh, um, company in Gdańsk, uh, where we now have 800 highly qualified engineers, IT specialists. And then 2003, we decided to set up um, um, a global service and an airline accounting center in Krakow. This, these two 
occasion still happened before Poland joined the EU even. Um, and now only in the last three years, we set up two um, joint ventures, not on the passenger side uh, that uh, Mika mentioned, but on the engineering side, maintenance, repair and overhaul. One joint venture with General Electric in Schroeder Schlonska, one uh, with MTU in uh, Yasionka Sheshov, because there we know one of, one of the main reasons was the, the highly qualified, motivated, dedicated workforce. Um, so we no longer look at, at, at Poland, and this is not because of labor costs, because if you want to have lower labor costs, you would go further afield. On the contrary, I think now, um, going back to what Ambassador Reiter said, now our destiny, our joint destiny, even gives us opportunities when it comes to to maintain supply chains, what we realized is so critical in like in a time of pandemic, our passengers couldn't travel anymore, but the world still relied on the um, um, dissemination of uh, medical equipment, repatriation flights, but also the logistical, logistical chains, which was severely disrupted. I think now also our companies, both on the Polish and Germany side, realizing that there is a great opportunity nearshoring in bringing some of these supply chains back closer to home on either side of the German Polish border. And so we're not, we're not looking, uh, personally, I, I never differentiate between uh, our businesses in Poland and our business in German. They, for me, this is a, is a joint entity. And the fact that we employ more people in Poland than in most other countries in the world is also a testament to that. Um, and um, what I would also like to mention, when it comes to geographic proximity, when it comes to tourism and exchange of people to people, in a way, we as airlines, both Lot and Lufthansa, we only benefit partially because people come by car, people travel by train. Um, if somebody wants to visit somewhere from Berlin to Stettin or from Dresden to Wroclaw, they don't decide to fly. That would be silly. So. We only get a small part of this market when it comes to the uh, interchange of, uh, of, let's say, friends and family VFR. Poland has a large diaspora all over the world, much, many more Poles in, in the US, North America, but also in the UK than in Germany. So this is also, of course, a business opportunity and, and also bringing people, people back. But um, in terms of um, how we consider Polish, Polish economy, um, one, um, this, the Polish economy is so highly diversified now. In many ways, um, it's already ahead of Germany when it comes to, to certain industries uh, like electromobility or IT or um, pharmaceuticals, um, supply chains, uh, gaming industry, where Poland is a real champion, even within the EU. And of course, we, we benefit from that as, as, a, as an airline as well, because these businesses pursue their relationships, their customer relationships, not just in Germany, but all over the world. And um, even one, one, one point that I always make, which even my colleagues in headquarters are always astounded, they don't believe me when I tell them that in Poland, we have more contractual relationships with companies who travel internationally than in any other country in the world, bar Germany, our home market. Uh, most most colleagues, the colleagues from China, the US, or from, from the UK and Italy, they don't believe that this is the case. But it, it is a testament to the close relationships also of, on, and, the, and also the entrepreneurship of the Polish businesses. Because I, I know in your paper, you referenced uh, the fact how highly dependent um, Poland is on exports to Germany, because uh, the trade in terms of trade volumes for Germany, Poland is number five. Um, for, for imports from Poland, um, it's already number four. And uh, for German trade to Poland, it's, it's, um, it's number six. Um, but um, I think what, what, um, what that also shows is that also Poland, it's, it's like an equal, like the trade balance between Poland and Germany is very level, very equal in terms of exports, imports. Um, so again, it's kind of... Um, Cooperation and when you talk about our airlines, competition, but cooperation on 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 eye to eye level, and I think the Polish the Polish economy is in a very very good place to also uh, seize opportunities that now arise with the pandemic. And just looking at our own industry, 
the largest, most ambitious infrastructure project in Europe is happening in Poland. You know, mentioning the Solidarity Hub. This is this is a project that most other countries don't even they, they couldn't they couldn't think it's feasible anymore because they don't have they don't have the uh, kind of the foundations and the, the conditions and the, 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 the entrepreneurial willpower to, to, to start such a project. And, you know, good luck to Poland for this, because for our industry, this would be transformative when it comes to, to travel, not just airline travel, but intermodular travel between the different transport systems. So, you know, congratulations to Poland for, for tackling such, such ambitious projects. Thank you, Frank, for mentioning this project, because, of course, I wanted to also ask, uh, ask about that. Uh, and let me um, uh, get back to Michal, because, of course, it's connected with uh, it's the transportation hub is very much connected with the plans of uh, LOT and the development of the Polish yeah. economy as well. <clears throat> uh, I would like you, because you are coming also from the business sector, it's not only that you are, you know, you have knowledge about airlines, and uh, our industry but in a larger scale if you can comment on how do you think polish business and polish economy can grow in which directions and uh, how do the poles or polish companies polish business people see their chances because the numbers are good for us the numbers show that we definitely profited from being uh, the eu member state we definitely profit out of the enlargement policy and cohesion policy we started at the level of ukraine in the 90s we are now at the level of uh, Portugal, maybe slightly uh, higher than Portugal, but still, as far as GDP is concerned, we are heading towards Spain. Still is not the level of Germany. Germany, we're talking about the, the fifth economy uh, of the globe, so it's still uh, a long way. But Michael, if you can comment on the aspirations and you know the hopes of the Polish business, where are we heading? Yeah, so first of all, be, uh, before I come to this, um, let me comment on the on the research presented by uh, by uh, uh, Ms. Wada regarding the perception of uh, Poles in Germany and Germans in, um, in Poland. I still remember uh, when studying in, um, in Germany, late uh, 90s, uh, I still remember this, uh, this saying, Komm nach Polen, dein Auto ist schon da. Uh, which means uh, come to Poland, your car is already already there. And it was reflected in these numbers. Indeed, the perception of Poles at that time in Germany was not at the, at the current level. And that's really a great success of both countries that we managed to, to move into the completely different uh, area uh, of uh, perception. Uh, the same applies also to the um, to the saying what you what you asked the Polish Wirtschaft, Polish uh, economy. I checked it even uh, once uh, uh, with my German partners, and they said uh, it's not relevant anymore. Uh, I mean, uh, most most of them, most of them, I would say, uh, don't understand even this um, uh, this phrase. Uh, I would compare it to to my uh, grandparents they don't understand uh, why the typical polish word for uh, afro americans is perceived as as offensive i mean that's the same applies to 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 polish uh, to polish uh, wirtschaft and this is really a great job of uh, uh, of uh, poland which which uh, has been done over the uh, over the years in terms of aspiration um, uh, let me speak for for the aviation uh, industry in the last uh, five years, um, the number of passengers of lot grew from four millions to, to 10 millions, and the growth was uh, profitable. And also the idea of the, um, of the solidarity hub was uh, being cre uh, created. And for sure, the geography is important in, in aviation. We are on the way from Western Europe to, uh, to Asia. Um, and additionally, and this is this is something which which plays um, um, a very important role because you can take all the passengers from the Western Europe to uh, let them transfer, change the airplanes uh, in Warsaw, and then later on to to continue their uh, their travel. Uh, but indeed, it's also the sign of of aspiration, as the previously mentioned Condor 
where we thought uh, it's, it makes sense absolutely to enter the uh, uh, the wealthy markets of uh, of Western Europe. And uh, in terms of the plans of of us, this is this is obvious. We will grow after pandemic as we used to grow below. We will use the uh, competitive advantages uh, which are here, the um, uh, high uh, high quality service, the set geography, um, and uh, we'll do our best to export uh, our services uh, to uh, to entire Europe, among others to uh, to Germany. And the um, so the ambition is there, the the competences are there, which is already proved. The product is there, and product in terms of load, it means uh, the schedule and uh, and the airplanes. Uh, we are having very good connections uh, to the to the entire central and eastern um, uh, Europe, but also the potential is there. The Lufthansa has here, and Frank, congratulations on that, 9% or 10% of Polish market, whereas whereas LOT uh, has only 1% uh, of, uh, of the um, capacity on, uh, on German markets. It only shows uh, what, is the, what is the potential, what is the potential for, uh, for growth, and it is the measure for our, for our ambition. Thank you, Michael, for this summary. I find it quite interesting, you know, to have this case study of the airlines, Lufthansa and Lot, which uh, actually visualizes very well or describes very well um, the closeness, but also certain issues uh, between the Polish economy or Polish business and German businesses. And of course, the potential is still not equal, but they are ambitious on the ambitions on the Polish side. And um, there is also huge potential uh, between uh, the Germans and Poles to cooperate. And let me, that's why let me conclude this talk with Ambassador Reiter's uh, final comment, because I would like, Janusz, if you can just try to use your knowledge about both the political sphere and geopolitics today and the current developments around Europe, not only inside Europe, plus the knowledge about Polish and German companies, because out of the fact, outside the fact that you used to be a diplomat, you also know uh, German and Polish business uh, being advisor to some of them. So if you can comment of, uh, on what uh, can we do together in order to use uh, in, the, in the most smart way the potential of both Germany and Poland for the years to come. Well, I think if we uh, first look at the map of Europe, and then if we look at the mega trends in the world, it's obvious that we need each other. And you cannot separate uh, the future of Germany from the future of Poland and vice versa. So it's, uh, uh, it's almost unimaginable that one of these partners uh, succeeds while the other one fails. This does not work. Of course, the European, the, the European Union is not about abandoning competition, but there is a lot of competition in the EU, although there is uh, also the specific mechanism of solidarity in the European Union. In financial terms, that's the cohesion funds. But of course, there is a lot of competition. And of course, it is much more challenging to compete against a stronger partner. But I mean, what makes more sense? Would it be in our interest to have a weaker partner and to, to compete against a weaker partner? If we look at where Poland was 30 years ago and where Poland is today, well, this is such, uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, th this effort was made because we, accepted the competition in Europe, not because we, we ran away from this competition. And I wish that the spirit of competition uh, would prevail in our relationship. Uh, having said that, but I think you said, uh, or maybe it was Agnieszka Kawala who, who said some, something about a German boss. Yeah. I mean, we have to, and this is a challenge more for the German side. 
having a German boss is for many Poles something that I think uh, um, they take uh, almost as, as, as natural. Having a Polish boss uh, is for many Germans still uh, something they have to learn to cope with. Uh, taking over Polish Germanies by German co Polish uh, Polish co companies by German companies, that is something that we know very well. Taking over uh, German companies by Polish companies is new, but it is it is growing. More and more Polish companies are investing in Germany, are taking over and developing German companies, and that shows that this relationship is well is, is developing well, and Poland is growing in this competition against the stronger partner. Politically, uh, if we accept that uh, Poland is a medium-sized country, and even Germany is a relatively strong country, cannot succeed in the, in the, in the competitive global order with strong pressure, especially from Asia, then I think this is one more argument for a, a close but fair partnership. And I would not suggest that this partnership already is ideal. No, a lot must be learned on both sides, also on the uh, German side. Uh, but I said the idea, the, mo the notion of having a Polish boss. This is a long way, but well, more and more Germans have a Polish boss. And I know uh, um, German companies that uh, have Polish investors and where people have a Polish boss. And this is the new, that's, that's the new reality that I think we can be proud of because 30 years ago, this was hard, this appeared to many people on both sides almost unthinkable. This is a, a reality that we are living in now. So I'm, I'm quite confident. And what I heard today from uh, both gentlemen from Lot and Lufthansa, and I know this is not an easy partnership, uh, and, that, 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 and this is why I even more appreciate the spirit of uh, the exchange between these two, because if this is possible between, between Lufthansa and Lot, I think this will be possible uh, uh, in many, many other cases. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for this meeting. I think uh, this was a, just a good uh, a case study to see uh, where we are with uh, Polish-German relations, generally speaking, and also with perception uh, from both sides. Uh, let's hope that the next 30 years, and even longer, uh, will be when we will not be even we don't need to discuss, you know, the relationship, it will be so good. And that's what I wish to all of us. And first of all, congratulations again to us, to the Center for International Relations for the 25 years, for Lufthansa, to Lufthansa for 50 years, 50 years in April, the 2nd of April, this was the opening of your operations in Poland, Frank. And to uh, Michal, what my, Michal said, uh, 75 years of lot uh, presence in Germany. So uh, thank you all, Janusz Reiter, Ambassador Janusz Reiter, the uh, Ambassador of Poland to Germany in the 90s and later on the, our Ambassador to the United States as well, the founder and president of the board of the Center for International Relations. Thank you, Janusz. Michał Fio, um, commercial, uh, Chief Commercial Officer of Lot Airlines. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. And Frank Wagner, uh, General Manager of Lufthansa Group in Poland. Thanks, Frank. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And just stay with us every Tuesday, uh, five o'clock on our Facebook profile. Good night. <laughs>